Two for two on the Select Podcast Network. I'm your host, Tim A. Shout out to your sponsors, Collect the Bears of Bahamas, Cause Light. Um, it used to be the Bear of the NBA, but they have a new slogan we're going to talk about next episode. And brand new to the scene, Ricardo, unique behavior. And I'm happy that Ricardo is joining us on this episode because we have a unique behavior with us. Um, Mr. Mr. Gardner, Speedy Stevie, gold medalist. Uh, that's me. I'm here with More 94. Well, shout out to Modern Fire that they, they provide us with the with the studio. So I, I always like to ask my guests, where did the name come from? So who nicknamed you Speedy Stevie? Who who gave you that name? Um, I would say myself. Um Self self proclaimed. Yeah, so it's gonna be trademarked soon, but <laughs> it's me. Yeah. And so how how long ago were you? So I, I think I read somewhere you used to play volleyball first and you got in the track? Yeah, I used to play well basketball. My father wanted me to be a basketball player mm-hmm. and I hated it. And sometimes he would take me, I, I would go to like basketball, like um, games on the weekend mm-hmm. to like play like a small little camp on the weekend. And I would not want to play. Mm-hmm. But then I got into volleyball in high school and I would play with uh, my cousins sometime and their church and stuff. So yeah, the volleyball was my first love. And then I branched over to track and field. So, and it was never a time we look back and say, maybe I should have done volleyball. No, because things now if things didn't work out in track, then I'd be like, Yeah, I'm going back. But because everything has been so sweet, um, I don't regret a thing. No. So I think it was twenty fifteen you had your first like when like people crying like, Oh yeah, this, this is the next I've talked to me about that yeah, twenty fifteen you first your first professional race, you talked to me about that. Twenty fifteen was my breakout year. Um twenty fourteen was me leaving the uh, amateur world to go over to the professional world and I made a, a pretty sweet transition doing that um, from amateur to professional. And for me, I think it's been, the journey has been amazing ever since. Yeah. So 2015, 2016 Olympus come, that was, I think it was in Rio. Rio and everyone was saying, yeah. oh, this is the one. He back, you win a goal. Talk to me about not, not getting your goal and talk. To, were you ever like, okay, I'm still young. I didn't get it. Maybe I got to give up. Just talk to me about the emotions at the Olympics. You didn't achieve a goal back then. Yeah. 2016 was just... Uh, just a very complicated time for me in 2016. Um, my first Olympic Games, I didn't get to make the final, which I wanted to do so bad. But nonetheless, we walked away with a bronze medal as a team in the 4x4. Which is still a, a, a big thing, you know. Some, I, I never met, like, like, you have something that most yeah. humans will never have, you know. Yeah, and for to walk away with a medal at my first Olympic Games, okay, that was, that was fine. But I really wanted to be in the final and to be on the podium. So I had to wait five years and normally because of the pandemic yeah because the pandemic normally been four years i had to wait five years but it just gave me more time to prepare and tokyo come out coming off of the world championships in doha in 2019 mm-hmm. it was it was amazing they put that me was, in that's when you win your, your, your gold, your my gold medal in the world champs and it put my head and myself in a good a good spot to have the opportunity to do it again in tokyo 2020 but because of the pandemic it was a, a delay but I think the delay was was a good thing because because the world championships was far um, later on in the year October, when we're normally finished our season in August. You know, so usually be like two months after, right after. Yeah, so once we finish in August, we'd have a longer break. Our break was super short, but the pandemic helped give me more time to rest and prepare. And Tokyo twenty twenty one twenty twenty we. We did it, you know? So before we get to the, the, the big goal, so the typical sports track fan really don't know what goes. So talk to me about what it takes because they could need to see maybe a couple of videos on Instagram or pictures. Yeah. Talk to me about a, a typical day that the track starts to go through just an overtime that is just well, yeah. mind, body, just train. Okay, so a typical day would be, for example, a Monday. A Monday is a crazy day. A Monday is the day you, you pray before you step on the line because Monday is a hard day. So... Coming off the weekend, we're off on Saturday and Sunday. On Monday, we're in our bag. So I would say warm drills, maybe a team meeting if we need one, or just let us know how the week is going to be planned and stuff like that. And just go there and we 
do our best, kill the workout and do you. Um, after the workout, may, it would probably last like maybe two hours or, yeah, two hours I would say would be the, the whole training mm -hmm. session. And after that, we'll go to weights. So we have an hour in between and we would go to the weight room and the weight room uh, normally lasts whenever you finish. So if you want to keep going, other reps, you don't want to take a break or you take a small, small break, then that's on you. But mm -hmm. it's normally like maybe an hour max. And after that, you, you go home or you go on your errands and you, you chill unless you have like therapy on a Monday or you have a massage appointment after. But that should be, that's about it. Basically, you do that every week for, for months at a time. Um, we, well, myself, I train four days a week. Okay. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yeah. Do but I would I would lift weights three uh, three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And a lot of people who, who really don't get the, the beyond, so you said beyond the therapy, so the physical yeah. therapist, you have dedicated trainers, so just talk about your relationships with them, and uh, does it make it easier or harder being close to them? Or? Um, it's, it's easier. Um, My coach and my gym instructor there they work together so he would send our um gym instructor to work out and he would he would um fix it for way that way where to where we um we well he'd alter it for us mm -hmm. i should say um where they work hand in hand so whatever he's doing on the track will affect what he's doing in the weight room yeah and where's your favorite place to train other uh, than home other than home Greece would be my favorite Greece, place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when, when was that when you, you, you got to train in Greece? Oh, I go to Greece every year. Oh, so okay, before nice. Tokyo, I was in Greece for three weeks training. Oh, okay. And the weather was super, super nice. It was warm. It was, I would say warm in the evening time, but in the morning time and the daytime, it was super hot. Mm -hmm. So I would train in the evening time in Greece. And the workouts was unbelievable. They're crazy. I've never done them in my life. Mm -hmm. And the times I ran, I've never run in my life. And that's how so I know. Maybe, maybe something was in that, in that Greece sun. So yeah. Act, that, activate the, the Greek that, gods and all that. That's how, I, that's how I know I was ready. And my coach told me, you're ready. Mm -hmm. So we just went out there and we just repeat what we did at, in practice. And we just did it again in Tokyo. So I want to show that's what it's called. Like, did you know that uh, cold hard fire, but, but what it calls like, it's called a silver bullet. I think you need to incorporate that into your, because I mean, you, 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 when you ran the race, I was watching home before I went to work and I was like, yeah. wait, this boy ain't gonna stop. Like he just kept going. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it was like, so we was like a little nervous, you know, it's like, baby, I hope you went because no, we, was, we, was, we had to mess the point. It's like, wait, yeah. this boy ain't stop and talk to me. What went through your mind? When you was when, when you when you was a, when you saw the finish line, you didn't feel nobody next to you. Just talk me was called your mind. Okay, so we'll talk about the whole race, the start. Mm, of the course, finish. of course. So the final night on the final, my start was trash. Mm. See, I wouldn't know as a tip, as a regular, yeah, I wouldn't be able I, to tell. If you if you saw the video, the person in front of me, of course, well, he always runs out hard, mm -hmm. and the person who was in the back of me, he ran up on me a bit, but I didn't panic at all because I know the type of foot speed I have, and I can hold my speed. But I kind of slipped at the block because we was held so long. Mm -hmm. And when I came out, my foot kind of stumbled. But I didn't panic. I just recovered. And the back stretch, I just did yeah, what I that's, normally that's do. When you, when you see your turn, it's like, what say? Yeah, I just, I just went. I just went for 300 meters and I did it. And the final, the final 100 meters, when I saw the screen, like the big screen inside the stadium, I was actually looking at that when I was running. Mm -mm. And I saw that I was in front. And I was like, we're going to do it right now. Yeah, I was yeah. like, let's just go. Let's just keep it moving. Keep it moving. And when I crossed the line, it felt like a burden was lifting off my shoulder because I know for one, 2016 was, was, was it, it wasn't it for me, you know? Yeah, yeah. I didn't get to perform at the best of my ability where I know I could have been on the podium. But 2020, after I did it, I just felt a sign of relief, you know? Like... I competed at the highest level and I won a gold medal and now I'm the world and Olympic champion. That's crazy. And then I, so talk to me about Kirani, when Kirani like picked up. So yeah. before I get it, is this joke? Because right, when you ran the, the, the semi-final. Right. But, that, but I don't mean the shirt. I mean, so it's a joke where you, it looks, when you're running, it looks like you are, you are calm, right? Yeah. And then after the race, you just like breathe down. So they just be like, so how people say, name is a joke. They say, you, you, like, you faking? Like you, no. you, you don't, you don't get tested. Because in the race, you look like you got like, you glide and like the same border me. When I was in race, you like, you were sucking ass. People was like, man, see, we just doing that so you don't get tested. No, um, you're going to get tested no matter what. <laughs> you, you can cry or 
you can come last and you still get tested. You come last. Yeah, that's how it is. People don't know. You can come last and you can still be the one that they test. And the person who wins might not even get tested. Exactly. But for me, when I... The way I the way I run is so relaxed. Like it looks like I'm I not even trying. Lord, but you look at you just like right. Oh, I, I'm not tired. I'm not sweating. I just the wind carrying me. That's right. So in training, my coach, um, he also would say it's too easy for me. So he would like he would tell me my time is this to make today, mm-hmm. and when I get there, he would, it would be a whole he, different I, time. I'll put that all yeah. yeah. He would lower my time to run. I was like, she told me this is what I have to run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, I don't pay it no mind and. I, I would complain, be like, what? I was like, if I don't make it, then that's on you. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. if I don't make it, then you have to put it back at this, the time it's supposed to be. But I would go there and I would I would do it. And he'd be like, see, I know what you can do. So mm-hmm. that's why I had to alter it for you. You know, I had to make it faster because you can make he it. He can see your potential. Yeah, he know my potential. And whenever he says, Stevie, you're ready? Oh, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. I'm, I always go there. So I was like, how you know I was ready? He's like, mm-hmm. because, he because last time you did this workout, you didn't do this. You didn't do X, Y, and Z. And this time you did it. So, oh, yeah, I would say. But the testing part is, nah, i just a naturally calm person mm-hmm. when, I, when, I, when, I, when I compete because it's poetry in motion. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you, when you fight and when you start to get sloppy and you're competing, it just throws everything off your technique and, you know. But... That's just that's just the person I am, and that's what I practice: the good posture and the good facial expression. But once I'm done, then I'm done. I can I can pass out. I'm like I said, he's, he's a this second and Kirani came. He, he placed the flag on you. Did he say anything to you, or he just was like? Get yeah, he, he said congrats because we've been competing against each other for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the he's an Olympic champion also right, in right. was it 2012? I think. I think it's 2012 because when I yeah I, I covered Karifta. In Grenada, 2016, he's from Grenada, and like they treat him like he is. He's yeah, there, so, so he's a genuinely nice guy, and I respect him so much. And yeah, but it was a good friendship. So you, you said earlier, and I guess I wouldn't know this. You stumbled. What part of the training, or is it just you personally being grounded, that you could the biggest race of your life? Yeah, and you stumbled, <laughs> and you at that point you was able to keep your composure. What? Yeah. So is that you? Is that a part of your training? Is it a combination? I would say it's part of myself. Um, because I'm not going to panic, you know, um, a person can be out in front of me or I would not panic because I know coming home, it's my finish. Mm-hmm. My finish is the killer. My finish is strong. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I know I'm going to catch up, you know, everybody can run a 300 meters, but it's the last hundred meters and the last 50 meters is where people start to fall apart and the race starts to separate, right, right. the race start to separate. But yeah, I would say my training also, I would work on posture and training and is that something you- no, in other runners, you think that's other, some other runners are working as well, or is that? Um, they should be. If mm-hmm. they're not, they should be. But that's just something me and my coach does. And when my arms start to get like sloppy, he would be mm-hmm. like, "Okay, we have to work on the arms a bit more." And always remember, you know, always remember certain things. That he would tell me to remember. But mm-hmm. yeah. And so you came on big, big chunk of new fast. came on and you now you up in the world of champions. When my daughter turns twenty, yeah. like. She'd be able to come home from a flight and see you up there. Like, talk to me about that. That's feel like I mean, I appreciate that's, that's, that's priceless. Yeah, it's it's amazing just to see myself on the wall of champions and consider one of the greatest and to make history. And, you know, many came before me and I guess I'm the, the chosen one to set the trend for the others in the near future. So another one of sponsors of Mercado, the hashtag is uniquely behemoth. What does your uniquely behemoth like pass like? So me, I like my wife, they call it, I like Kung Frida and Sky, Sky Juice. That's, that's my unique behemoth. Like, what's, what's yours? I like anything Kong. I can eat Kong salad every day. If my if my mother cooks food, I'll eat Kong salad. And I'll be like, I'll eat the food later. <laughs> Ali Kong Sal and go to bed. Are you sure she's be mad at you? No, she's she gonna be mad. No. <laughs> she she knows from high school. She knows if I get a Kong Sal on a Friday, mm-hmm. she's not gonna worry about cooking because I don't want it. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna make my Kong salad and relax. So you brought up your mom. So everyone knows what the mom everything is always like nah, so eccentric, nah, so eccentric. Sometimes you bring up free, but talk to me about the great I only went like actually my father's family is actually from Abaco. <sighs> so just talk to me about the, the greatness of Abaco and your family and how that you know, you know your upbringing. Abaco is just one big support system. And everybody in Abaco knows me and they know the type of person I am and they always, always show support. And for my island and for my country, I would do anything, you know? And when I came home, they really showed me how much they appreciate me and how much I made everybody happy. I see, you see, you've been fishing. Of, of course I've been <laughs> fishing, but everybody showed me, showed me all the love and the support that 
that I need and I thank them for it and I give them their praises and I'm just happy that I was able to do something for my island after devastating Hurricane Dory. Yeah, I saw a post of Junior Rodriguez, some supplies was given. Yeah, last with week. the Rotary Club and, you know, but I just want I just wanted to make everybody happy, you know, and bring back joy to the island since Hurricane Dorian. So um, I we saw you um last week, a week before the last week, nice shoot with Sherrod and like, yeah, and I always think you these are talking about that like ideas, like that's a brand, like you, when you was younger, you went and saw you by it, you just you yeah. are you are a brand amb- ambassador sponsored by you. like how, what's the official? It's everything, brand everything. ambassador, my sponsor, you know, um, it's amazing. I've been with them eight years now. Eight. Eight years, wow, time okay. fly. Okay. Since I was in the twelfth grade, nice. I signed my first my first wow. deal with Adidas, and since then, we've been a part of the three stripe family. So I can't wait to get the the golden. I mean, the, the for the youngster, golden Stevie something. Those, so I can. You like, know, I have like two pair of gold shoes mm-hmm. they sent me. Oh, nice, nice. So I guess something good is coming. You know. Okay, yeah, that'd be pretty nice. Yeah. And so, so you said you mentioned the off season. So, what is what does a, a track set that, that will do in his off his off season? Cause, I mean, you, sh- you can't let your body go to waste. Like, so what's what's like a nah, off season? For um, you? because we try we train at such a high intense level. My coach, he would all he would let us. He said, just chill, you know. So we enjoy life. So vacation, spend time with family, relax, you know, tour and just clean fun, but. When it's near time, time, when time comes near to the season, um, off season training starting back up, mm-hmm. he would send out an email and send us out small stuff to start. But the boxing, the leg, okay, but time to wrap up now. Nah, he would just say, um, here's what we're getting back soon. Okay. Here's like some small stuff to do in order to, to come back and at least have your breeding back in some type of order, you mm-hmm. know? So he would send out like some, a few jogs for us to do and a few like two minute runs or a minute run, mm-hmm. but a minute jog, I should say, just to start back. And then when we get back in full swing, then everybody be where they need to be. So it seems like track is only really popular around the time that it goes quite for four years. I know, I know some diehard track fans who watch like every league. How do you feel like being a part of it? Like what's the next step in track being like a year long watch sport? Cause I mean, you always have a basketball and yeah. football. Like, what do you think it's missing? Or is it trending the right way? Cause I mean, all of the stuff was happening with Shigari. Like that was a good, that was a good media thing. Like, mm-hmm. People started to pay attention because they want to see her because of her personality. But like, I know a lot of track fans was like, well, I just watch every league, like Diamond League, this league. What yeah. do you think is missing? Or do you think you guys in the right track for the track be like a big thing yearly? Yeah, I mean, track is like a tough sport. Like it's an individual sport, I should say. Um, I don't even know how to, how to, how to say it, talk about it because, you know, we have the you have the NBA and the NFL. They're all like big teams and right, right. whatever. But track and field, I think track and field don't get the recognition that it that it should have because we train year year in and year out for maybe two or three races. Yeah, a few races and a few seconds, you know, to get a personal best, you know. So that's just that's just crazy. But I guess in the future things will be much better. So you, you used to be the young guy coming up now. You're approaching the older ones. Is, is there any other younger track stars, behaving or otherwise, you're looking at or training or just... You... Yeah, um, there's Wendell Miller. He's up and coming. He, he's young. He got second to me at our our Olympic trials, mm-hmm. you know? And he's super super talented. So he's got to be one of the next one. And there's another one. I think his name is Wanye. I can't mm-hmm. remember his last name, but mm-hmm. he's another one. Them two... They're gonna be a problem okay. in track and field. And, but, and have any of them, any them too, or anyone coming up to you like ask for advice, like hey, Steve, yeah, I would, I would always encourage them, and I would always tell them, good job. Like even when we compete, I was like, hey, good job, man. I'm happy for them because I, I, I know what it was coming into the sport and um, looking for people, advice, and people to just you know to motivate, help motivate me. You know, but yeah, I would do, it, I would do it for them. You know, and you can ask them; they'll be like. They were like, yeah, he encouraged, he encouraged me. And sometimes on Instagram, they would message me and I would respond back and, hey, how was it going? And if they compete, I would say good race and stuff like that. And just, just encourage them, you know, because it's hard. Like without support, everybody knows without support, things are super tough. And, and you fall apart, you give up. 
but yeah. So we all know your relationship with Sean and Yam. Any other of our Titans and other sports you talk to, see like or oh, admire like Buddy John Quell, you know, we Yeah, to John Quell is my is my good friend. Okay. I just talked to her this week. Well, so she's gonna Sunday. she's gonna be in the, on the next episode, either the next one or the, the next after. And I'm hoping she'll win the MVP. I'm pretty sure she's, she's gonna win it. So yeah, I, so I, proud to see you know. Yeah, she's she's doing very good, and we would talk from time to time. And I talked to her on Sunday. She told mm-hmm. me she was she could have got a flight to Nassau, but. She's somewhere else, and, yeah, and the, the travel would be so long. Their season just ended uh, Sunday. You know, yeah. Their players were the side like a couple days. So. Yeah, you got John Quell and Sean is my good sister. So. Yeah, my good, my good sock, sock, you know? Yeah, my good sister. So, yeah, I'm just You happy. should look at me like, why well, I better bring up sock? <laughs> yeah, but there's a lot of great Bohemian athletes, and even the past ones, the mm-hmm. so amazing ones. Like, for example, LDs, mm-hmm. a tourism now. She's a tourism, mm-hmm. and... She's one of my, I would say one of my biggest supporters, you know, she would message me so many times. She's so proud of me and keep on going and just a lot of encouraging stuff. In the same vein, are, are there any other former athletes who are your mentors coming up or even if you raced again? So like, yeah. Um, and you mean internationally? Oh, both payment or international. Yeah. I would say Jeremy Warner. I remember racing against him in 2017. Is it? No, it was in 2017. <laughs> I would say 2015, okay. Jeremy Warner. We competed in 2015. Um, it, was, it was on the 4x4, so he won the leg on the 4x4, mm-hmm. but later on the season, we had an open 400, and I whooped him. <laughs> and during the Olympics, when I competed in the T-shirt, he messaged me on Twitter. He was like, you're, you're crazy. You run 44 one in a T-shirt. <laughs> and a T-shirt. So what's going to happen for the final? Right, right. Yeah, but yeah, he's, he's just amazing. And I remember growing up, Watching the Olympics, he he would run forty threes like like there were nothing. There's nothing to him. Forty threes and you know, I'm just happy that I'm in the forty three club now. Now seeing that. But yeah, he's he's just such an amazing talent and, and amazing inspiration. So you have the Olympic girl, the world world goal. What what else is left on your, your checkbox of things that the city wants to do? Well, Olympics is the highest level, but I just want to do it want do it again. Do it again in Paris. Like like I'm kinda say, another one. Another one, yeah. So you mentioned earlier how you have an extra year because of COVID. Now, now we have a, you have an extra last year because of COVID. Yeah, so everything how, is back on so, normal schedule. So it's three more years. Do you think that would affect you and other athletes in any way? Or? Um, it depends on how you monitor your races. If you decide to go hard every year or you decide to, okay, this year we're going to back back a bit. This year we're going to pick it up. But it's just up to them and their coaching, their agency, what, they, what their plan is to do. Because basically, if you, when I say if, when you get your goal in, in, in Paris, I mean, it's Paris. Paris, So you'll be able to have two goals, well, three if you've got the world by yeah. before 30. Like, that'll be like, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm not, I'm trying to do what I have to do while, while my window is open mm-hmm. and... Take advantage of the time. Yeah, and then on to the next, on to my next chapter in life. Do you have any idea what that is yet? Are you still trying to... Yeah, I would say... I, lo- I love real estate, if you know. If you yeah. didn't know, I love real estate yeah. and property well, management. Well, I do I do see you post a lot of, like, you know, scenic pictures, so I, I can kind of see the eye. Yeah, I, I real estate is my, my thing. I love real estate and property management and stuff like that, so. You can imagine being sold real estate from a two-time government. Like, hey, you're going to buy it? And just, yeah. the, just the James clanking, you know? Like, yeah, so that's what I want to do in life, and maybe something else if opportunities come along the road. I could, you know, do multiple um, stuff. So thank you again for coming. He's a very busy man. You know, all day he was busy. I, I hope to see why soon. You're going to see. It's coming up shortly. So You're going to so see. Much. A gold medalist. I'm very proud of our, like I said, who does say to tell the stories of our, our young people yeah. and our doing stuff? Because everyone ain't going to be an accountant, a lawyer, and doctor. You, know, you, nah. you, you have people in sports and creators, and I'm probably doing this. I'm waiting now. This is going to be the new resource culture minister. So yeah. now we can see what happens with that ministry and just, we can have like five, we ain't, you know, we got to replace TV, but we can have more, you know, yeah, you can have more. more medalists and That's right. MVPs and three point shooters and, that's right. So thank you again. Um, anything else you want to say that where they could find you if they want to talk, give good words, get some advice? Yeah. Um, Speedy Stevie on Instagram, Twitter, all platforms, Speedy Stevie. And yeah, um, shoot me a message and yeah, let's just, let's just go with that. So thank you again. Shout out to Collect, Cause Light, Ricardo. This has been an episode of Food Act and this is Timmy. Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that?